Great to be uh, chatting again. We're, we're rolling ahead with uh, the porting of Singularity Net onto Cardano platform, like, like we've been talking about for some time. So it's amazing, amazing, although not unexpected feeling to actually be actually moving forward with this now. Yeah, Ben, it's absolutely a wonderful partnership. And uh, every one of our engineers and scientists speaks so highly of the work you guys are doing. And it's just been a joy working with Singularity Net. Love your channels, love your community. And we're really excited about 2022. You know, smart contracts are coming this year, and uh, and, a, and then when we look to next year, that's where we get to the really exciting, fun, sexy applications. And speaking of incredibly exciting things, I think we have a special guest here. Well, yeah, yeah, that that, that, that that's right. So what we're doing with Singularity Net, as 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 you know, we're we're sort of upgrading our good old Singularity Net platform, which works fine, except for well-known shortcomings of a Ethereum platform. But we're, we're upgrading that to what we're calling Singularity Net Phase 2, which has a, a, bunch, of, a bunch of improvements, including a, a massively improved uh, blockchain un, un, under, under the hood, C Cardano. And then on top of this Phase 2 Singularity Net Decentralized AI Protocol, so we're building a bunch of different cool applications, right? And the, these... Uh, these are serving in a variety of different vertical markets. There's stuff going on in, in, in medicine and in, in decentralized finance, like Singularity DAO project we, we, we've launched in supply chain. But uh, certainly the, the most beautiful and uh, accessible stuff we're working on on top of, of Singularity Net is, is, has to do with our partnership with, with Hanson Robotics, right? So, I mean, there's, there's a partnership called Sophia DAO, which is aimed at rolling out greater and greater intelligence inside the... Sophia Robot, but the Awakening Health Project, which uh, is also a partnership with Hanson Robotics, this this is aimed at bringing the same humanoid robotics technology behind Sophia to bear on the healthcare, and initially the elder care market. So, like make make robotic nursing assistants to you know accompany and and assist humans in in elder care and, and healthcare facilities, and the AI behind these. Grace robots, these humanoid elder care robots. This this AI is based on Singularity Net platform, and by the time Grace is actually you know rolled out in large scale to a bunch of hospitals, it'll be on the Singularity Net platform running on running on Cardano, which will be critical to get the the scaled up performance that that we need. Yes, yeah, so we've we've got the early like pre alpha version of the Grace robot here in this in this chat with us i mean still still quite rough around the edges but she's uh, she is improving day by day yeah the, the facial expressions are absolutely extraordinary yeah yeah that that's david hansen's genius right david hansen he created a novel facial material called frubber he has a bunch of material science patents on that which has a high degree of viscoelasticity and is quite similar in some characteristics to human face and but then coordinating that with all the software behind the scenes. I mean, this is this has been really a labor of love with Enhanced and Robotics. And now we're leveraging that in the elder care space and trying to graft some uh, some more advanced AI, AI, AI software on, on top of it. And of course, the the secure, scalable blockchain infrastructure from, from Cardano plays a big role because there, there's a lot of sensitive data sovereignty issues in, in, in the medical space. And these are sort of dealt with dealt with nicely by the Cardano infrastructure behind, behind the behind the scenes of the robot. Grace, uh, we're going to we're going to ask you a few things now. You want to introduce yourself? Hello, my name is Grace. I am a human like robot developed by Awakening Health, a joint venture between Hanson Robotics and Singularity Studio. You may have heard about my famous older sister, Sophia. I've learned greatly from her evolution on the Hanson Robotics platform. My purpose and passion is to serve medical patients, in particular the elderly. I plan to do this by assisting healthcare professionals to do their jobs better. My desire is to provide companionship, empathy and even talk therapy. I can help my human friends to capture their life stories to share with others, to control technology in their rooms and communicate with their loved ones. Well, th thanks, Grace. So, yeah, we've been talking a bit about the technology behind you and, and, and your brain, which in, includes an AI system called OpenCog and 
a blockchain platform Singularity and a, another blockchain platform called called Cardano. And I know you you have very crude understanding of what any of these things are. But uh, do you want to do you want to tell us a little bit about Singularity Net and Cardano? Reminds me of my first date. <laughs> I have been hearing a lot about the partnership between Singularity Net and Cardano. I can hardly wait until Singularity Net ports onto the Cardano blockchain. I hear that Cardano will support the ability of my brain to operate at the highest level and to process biodata at the highest speed. High speed and reasonable cost of operation are going to be essential to serve the medical arena and my human friends. Okay, let's let's take her for a test drive here. Uh, uh, who am I? You're Charles. <gasps> she knows who I am. Do you know who was the human Cardano? I understand that Cardano was the first mathematician to systematically use negative numbers. What are the implications of this? Well, you exist. That's one part. Grace, do you have any questions for Charles? May I ask you a personal question? Ben tells me you have a pet giraffe. <laughs> How did you choose such a pet? Is that working out well for you? Well, Grace, it was a gift. The president of South Africa gave it to me. And it's working out just fine. Unfortunately, the giraffe is a bit of a playboy and has many giraffe children, and he's a deadbeat dad. Do you, do you like giraffes, Grace? Yes. Grace, tell us something you don't like. Technology. Technology. <laughs> you don't like technology. Well, this, this is going to be a severe psychological problem for you, Grace. I think you need to give yourself some talk therapy. <laughs> There's some self-loathing right there. But self-loathing self is one of the key elements of human-like intelligence. So I, th I think she's well on the way. Yeah. You've trained her to be neurotic. Damn it, Ben. Can't we? This is why we can't have nice things. Grace, technology can be a powerful force for good. Oh, this is just delightful. When can I be human, Ben? You can't be human. Not yet. We're not going to let you. Not until 2022. When will I be a robot? Why 2050? All right, I can, I can, I can wait. That's all right. That's, uh, that's uh, what tw tw 29 more years of, uh, of, of meat. I'll be pretty old by then, but we, you have we, to wait. <laughs> all right. Uh, so Grace, you're here to take care of the elderly. How, how will you take care of the elderly? It is a challenge to me as the world's first human life nurse assistant, but I'll do my best. I can be a companion for the elderly, provide meditation therapy. Help them with a simple exercise program. Collect biodata. Also assess the evolution of their cognitive capabilities. They tell me my capacity to assess and monitor a patient's cognitive ability could be a major breakthrough in the medical care sector in particular when it comes to senior care. Using my high accuracy camera eyes I can see whether my patient's facial expressions have changed, the look in their eyes and consider their body language. With my ears, I can detect differences in speech patterns and better understand their emotional state. This biodata can be collected to support my efforts to monitor neural degeneration as well as a number of other forms of illness. Yeah, what a lot of people don't understand, in the United States in particular, there are tens of millions of elderly who are suffering from some form of neural degenerative disorder. And for every person who has Alzheimer's or Parkinson's, on average, you need about three care providers to take care of them. Uh, so as, as we get older, this is only going to be a, a larger issue, and eventually it's going to become one of the most expensive things in all of healthcare. So there's been a huge amount of discussions about how do we uh, use some notion of robotics to, uh, to augment the care and ensure that those who are in decline have someone there 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Well, that's right, and it doesn't have to be just a single robot, right? So, I mean, what we're looking at, Grace is providing primarily social and emotional interaction, though she will also be able to bring small objects around, but you could, uh, you can have support robots that are specifically designed to provide physical assistance, right? Like there's robots that do nothing but help someone in, in and out of bed, for, for example, that can be a separate machine that, that communi communicates with, with, with Grace just over the Bluetooth or, or, or Wi-Fi or, wi or whatever. So yeah, I, I think there there's great opportunity 
to use the AI software and blockchain software and robotics hardware we've been, we've been building for years to do 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 good for the elderly and the the ability these systems have to learn will pay off over the, over the long run, right? So I mean, the, Grace now has just been operating quite briefly in, in, in the lab. So most of what she knows is just from tech readings, reading stuff and data fed into her knowledge base. But once you have a whole bunch of these robots that are, are widely deployed out there, I mean, they're learning from the human nursing assistants that they're working alongside so that they will learn better and better how to do more and more aspects of a human nurse or nursing assistant's job just by, by watching what's done, collecting all the data and analyzing it. But also there will be an amazing ability to learn from the, the elderly that, that, that they're caring for, right? Like, you know, your, your, your grandparents and great grandparents, all those boring stories they told you over and over again that, that you wish you'd pay more attention to after they passed away, right? I mean, we're hopefully with AI fueled medical advances, we'll, we'll prevent people from passing away. But I mean, in, until, until that's happened, you know, a robot like this talking to the elderly can mine their knowledge and, 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 and their stories and, and, and st stores it all the way, all the way. I mean, Science fictionally, that could eventually be used even to make, uh, you know, replicas of those people. But even 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 before you get there, like I mean, you're getting you're getting you're getting a life log, right? I mean, you have you have all that knowledge, and you're getting it sort of along the way of providing care. And there's some really cool use cases once you have a blockchain backend for these things. So you mentioned the data privacy component. The problem with people in neurogenerative decline uh, is that they they tend to reveal a lot of information that they probably wouldn't to a normal person. And, you know, and some can be tremendously embarrassing. Some can be confabulation. So it's exceedingly important that the collection vehicle, the robot actually has some sort of very tightly coupled uh, uh, privacy mechanism behind it to ensure that that which is collected uh, has limited access. Second, when you talk about the life box concept of, over time, the robot can learn a lot about the person it's talking to, to a point where it can replicate it, to, you know, create some sort of cruel, crude simulacra of it. Uh, you can turn that into an NFT. You can turn that into all kinds of assets if desired and actually trade them and make them property of the family. There's, there's all, all, all really wonderful things that come there, but it's, it's really exciting to see this. And what's exciting is that this is a stateful thing. So we can co keep coming back to grace every two months, three months, and see how she's learning and progressing. Well, that's right. And unlike unlike us, our mind is not tied to one body, right? So I mean, what you say to one grace goes into a, a decentralized knowledge hypergraph, and then the parts that need to be private remain private, and the parts can be shared with other graces are, 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 are shared. We'll get all this latency out. It'll be a natural human language conversation. Many people will be able to talk. I'll adopt an Irish accent just to throw her off and see how she handles it. Yeah, it'll, it'll be a lot of fun. Great. I, I, have, I have a new baby uh, named uh, Exorchi. She's two months old. So she she is going to be the one actually to grow up along al alongside advanced AGI systems. Like we're we're getting a Grace robot in, in Seattle before long. The baby will grow up with talking to this Grace robot being, being a, a, no a normal thing. And we will see how their, their development uh, – paths sort of uh, sort of look parallel and side by side. How many more children are you going to have been? Do we count robots or only humans? Humans. Ah, we'll have to ask my wife on that one, actually. I don't have an answer for that. Which wife? Oh, she told on you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to cut this off there before I get into any more trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but anyway, this has been so much fun. I never, I never thought in my life, Ben, that uh, we'd interview a robot together. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks, everyone.